Hey everyone, Cookie here. I have for you a commentary on the state of competitive Halo. In the background, you're going to be seeing a CSR42 Big Team Slayer gameplay. Uh, I ended up getting a 50 in the playlist, and this is one of the game types, or one of the gameplays on the way there. Um, I have a lot of material to cover in this commentary, so I want to start off immediately talking about the $500,000 tournament that 343 announced that it is hosting. They announced it in the Halo Bulletin, uh, released yesterday, June 19th. If you don't know about the Halo Bulletin, I'll put a link in the description, or you haven't read the recent issue, I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. But basically, 343 is hosting a $500,000 FFA tournament. There is more details to come about the specifics, but what we know right now is that qualifiers will be both online and on-site. Uh, they said something about the... Rooster Teeth Expo being the start of the tournament. It takes place this summer. I don't know if it's like a span of a couple of weeks. I'm not exactly sure what the deal is, but it is going on. Now, why they're choosing FFA instead of the traditional four-man teams is quite obvious to me. I think it's just that, you know, choosing the four-man teams would pretty much be an AGL event with an extremely big prize pool. Of course, it would attract more teams to Halo, but the next AGL event would or the next, you know, AGL type event would just have that much smaller of a prize pool, so then not as much, not as many teams would uh, fly out for it. So they basically want to bring the casual player back into Halo. They want to bring the people who want to, you know, I mean, everyone will want to qualify online. Everyone will want to qualify on site if they're near the place. Um, they're trying to bring the casual player back into Halo, and I think it's a good strategy. I definitely support them doing the. Uh, the FFA structure rather than the four-man team structure. Um, and I guess that's debatable, but I, I think it's a smart move on their part. Anyway, more details to come about that. It's exciting for now, and we'll just have to see what the turnout is when it actually happens. Now I want to talk about Team Throwdown. Team Throwdown, if you don't know, is the competitive playlist. It's the MLG of Halo 4. Ghost Yame, a former Halo pro, is in charge of it. He has exclusive, pretty much, he exclusively takes care of the Team Throwdown playlist. One of the problems with it right off the bat is that it requires DLC. Halo 4 just doesn't have the population that Halo 3 did. Everyone in Halo 3 got the DLC, and Black Ops 2 has a huge population, and everyone in Black Ops 2 is getting the DLC. They have no trouble selling their DLC, whereas Halo, I mean, just look at the majestic DLC population numbers. They're very sad. Under 100 players, almost at all times. And at night, it goes down to like under 20. It's just a very sad sight, but people don't buy the DLC. And that being said, look at Team Throwdown. The population numbers at its best are at like 600, maybe maybe 700 on a, on a weekend day, midday, when all these kids are on. But besides that, most people that play Halo... Don't play Team Throwdown. That's just the reality of it. They play Big Team, Infinity Slayer, Action Sack, uh, more of the social games. If you go back to Halo 3, uh, the social population was far bigger than the ranked population almost at all times, and there's something to be said for that. In order to grow the competitive population, you really do need to grow the casual population first. That's not necessarily any of the competitive players' fault but that's just the reality of the situation. Um, and Team Throwdown definitely reflects that with its low population numbers. So, I want to talk a little bit about the Beyond Entertainment. If you're not familiar with Beyond Entertainment, it's pretty much keeping Halo alive. It's It covers all this Halo news and any other relevant topics to Halo. It covers Destiny news, Xbox One news. It's just pretty you know pretty good overall news site specifically tailored to Halo 4 competitive scene though I'd say or the Halo competitive community but I'll put a link in the description or you can go to teambeyond.net to check them out I definitely encourage it they do some good stuff so anyway I want to talk about them a little bit they have a good thing going they're trying to to bring the casual player into Halo again and they're trying to keep things not so exclusive to the competitive community um, even though they do have that, that tint. And I think they're doing a good job at it. 
Unfortunately for them, I really don't think that they can make that much of a difference in the end because I think you need a, a big casual population in order to even build up a, f uh, a strong viewership to a site like Team Beyond. But they're doing a good job overall. Um, one problem I see is that there is that exclusivity factor. All of the people associated with Beyond Entertainment are from the old Halo competitive scene. And when I say old, I mean Halo 2, Halo 3, uh, maybe Halo Reach, but back when the Halo population was bigger than CODs. <laughs> that's where, that's who's affiliated with it. I guess that's good because they're dedicated, but at the same time, no one really knows them, and they act as if people do. Um, if you look at some of their content, they'll be like, oh hey, I'm say like pistola and like not many people know pistola um just being honest like i of course know him um people know like roy but making a huge deal out of the return of roy without exactly explaining the backstory is really not going to attract that many people and i mean it's once again it's not their fault but it's just there's a problem with exclusivity what they can do about it i'll talk about a little bit later in this in this commentary but um that's just something that I feel like is is a problem. So in trying to keep competitive Halo alive and the casual player interested, um, I think Team Beyond's doing a good job overall. I encourage you to, to, to I encourage you to check it out, especially Saucy Soars. Um, he has a YouTube channel. I'll put his link in the description. He's doing great a great job keeping things competitive and casual. Um, but to get to my conclusions about the competitive scene, Halo is in an extremely or Halo competitive scene is in an extremely weak state right now. Even though some may say it's growing slowly, I really think it it, it is quite hopeless. Um, and this is just an honest assessment of it. And I really I'm not biased in any way. I in fact would want to see it grow, but I just think it's it's pretty much not recoverable right now. Um, even with all the title updates that 343 is doing, even with uh, adding Mini Slayer, they're bringing more people back to Halo, uh, although a modest amount, uh, Halo is still not growing, especially the competitive scene. Throw it on playlists. Uh, the numbers are just low. AGL numbers, may yeah, they reached, they reached a record last event, but... They still are crazy small compared to the COD population. And what does that say? It just says in the end that this is this is what I think. COD just made a better game. Activision just or Treyarch just made a better game. It's just the reality of it. Um, Halo 4 wasn't a good game, and a lot of people will nitpick issues like D scope, sprint, um, you know, all of the above. But I really don't think, even if those were in the game, I don't, I'm not exactly sure Halo would be um, as thriving as it was in Halo 2 and Halo 3. I just think COD made a better game. More people are attracted to COD. Younger players are playing COD. And that's just the reality of it. Alright, so even though this match ended, I ended up with 24 kills. Once again, CSR 42, big team. Um, I encourage you to stick around for my conclusions, though. So, as I said before, COD just has a better game. That's just the reality of it. And uh, with D-Scope, even if they bring back D-Scope, eliminate Sprint, eliminate Flinch, they bring ranks back in, they separate social and ranked populations, I'm really not sure Halo can recover. Um, it's just one of those things where Halo is just going to have to start with a better game. And I guess we'll have to wait until 2014 for that to happen. And one of the last things I want to say is that another thing that's hurting Halo and exacerbating just the problems with its population numbers is the fact that it comes out with games like every two years, essentially. Um, their next game is out in 2014, probably near the holiday, like Christmas, which is quite late, whereas COD is releasing COD Ghosts, their next installment, uh, made by Infinity Ward, um, with the Xbox One launch. So, 
I can only imagine how many more people will be flooding to the COD community and will be leaving the Halo community. Even Halo players that are really dedicated to Halo will probably buy COD Ghosts along with an Xbox One and they will probably enjoy it enough. When Halo comes out, it'll just be an afterthought. Very sad, but if Halo 5 is anything like Halo 4 except a little bit better, then I really think Halo just doesn't have the population to survive, and the competitive community definitely doesn't have the population to survive. Um, the, the, just the decision to release COD Ghosts with the Xbox One is, is one of those things where, you know, Halo missed out on it. I know that there's nothing really 343 can do because it takes time to work on a new game, but it's just something that, you know, it's a smart move, and uh, it just shows you that it's unfortunate, but COD really has taken over the competitive scene of things, and uh, it has all of the casual players, um, whereas uh, Halo just doesn't have the casual population to support a thriving competitive community. It all starts with the casual players, and that was supported by the numbers in Halo 2 and Halo 3. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I have to say. And uh, regarding how Beyond Entertainment can fix the problem of exclusivity, and just in general the Halo competitive scene can fix the problem of exclusivity, is just they can uh, they they can't really do much. It's unfortunate, but it really does all come down to how how good of a game three four three makes. Um, they can just promote the events that are going on for Halo as much as they can. Try to stay not exactly tainted toward the competitive community in their announcements in what they advertise and that's the best they can do but other than that they really can't do much it all now it comes down to how great the next Halo game is and uh, how much of a hype it gets um, anyway I'll have more commentaries about news about just issues that are relevant in, in recent news and re recent video game news I want to talk a decent amount about Destiny Titanfall the new games announced at E3 that are looking pretty good, and just the Xbox One. Um, anyway, yeah, I'll incorporate more news into my channel, um, and I'll continue to do gameplays, I'll continue to do my Road to 50s, and I'll bring you some more unique content to come um, pretty soon. Anyway, my last thoughts are just, there may be a new generation of games coming. COD will probably continue to sell. It'll probably grow for a little bit. Maybe one or two games. You know, it'll continue to grow. But I think that Halo may be on its last days. And even COD. Even COD may be after this next game or after the game after that. You know, the population numbers may be starting to get slower. I mean, there really isn't that much they can do with it. They've already had, like, you know, handfuls of COD games. And if they're going to have handfuls more, I don't know. I mean, it's just not new enough. It really isn't new enough, especially with, you know, new consoles coming out, um, new technologies. Just, I think there is room for a new generation of games. I'm not saying that Halo is, Halo is dead, as everyone says, Halo is dead. But I'm just saying that there may be a new generation of games. And uh, Halo, the Halo community, especially the Halo competitive community, may be trying to revive something that simply can't be revived anyway with those parting thoughts uh just uh please just uh continue to watch my channel i'll even though i just gave a dismal outlook of the halo competitive community and just halo in general i'll continue to post gameplays i'm still a halo fan um, I still enjoyed it enough to post gameplays, so they will still come, um, just like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and see you later.